Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using Eclipse as an integrated development environment for PHP. The first thing we're going to do is get Eclipse. One way to do this would be to go over to Eclipse.org, the main Eclipse website, download Eclipse, and then download the appropriate plugins to use Eclipse as an IDE for PHP. That, though, would be more complicated than we need. Instead, we can go over to zen.com, specifically their URL www.zend.com slash pdt, and get a, an Eclipse package that they've put together that includes the PHP development tools. When you get to the zen.com slash pdt URL, find the download all-in-one package section. They'll have a link to their downloads page, which is not very well organized. What you want to look for is you want to look for the most recent version, the highest version number of PDT. Here we got PDT-1.0.0. And then find the one that corresponds to your operating system. We're going to go ahead and download that. I actually have already downloaded it, so we're going to skip that part. And what you're going to get when you extract this zip file is a directory called Eclipse. Note that Eclipse does not need to be installed through a normal Windows installer or installer that you might use on another operating system. Everything that you need to run it is right there. You do not need administrative privileges to download and run Eclipse. So when we look in that Eclipse directory that we downloaded, we'll see an Eclipse executable. On Windows, it's eclipse.exe. We'll go ahead and run that. And it's going to ask us, the first time we've used it, to tell it the workspace we want to use. The default will generally be our user home directory slash workspace. We want to go ahead and use that in this case, and we're going to tell it not to bother asking us again, just to use that same workspace in the future. Here Eclipse has started up. This is a screen that you will only see the very first time that you start Eclipse generally. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to skip it. You would find tutorials and such floating around in here. But if we go ahead and close this welcome screen, we're going to get what looks like a normal IDE. We're not 100% ready to start using it for PHP yet. We're very close though. What we want to do is we want to go over to the perspectives area, which is in Eclipse at the top right to change perspectives. Click on this icon here and then choose PHP and that will rearrange our workspace for generally appropriate PHP development. Adding a few sections here and there which because the resolution on the screen is so small you may have a hard time seeing what they say. So let's take a look here. What it's added is a PHP Explorer um, then some a PHP project outline, PHP functions the first thing I recommend doing, especially because you're going to have a much more normal and large resolution on your monitor than in this tutorial here, is to take the outline, click on it, and drag it over to the right. There's a, let's see here, how do we, maybe we want it like that. The outline is going to be useful in a moment, you'll see what for. So now we're ready to start adding PHP projects and files. Here in the PHP Explorer, we're going to right click, then choose New PHP Project, and we'll give it a name Test Project, and click Finish. We're going to then right click on the test project and say New PHP File. We're going to call this first PHP file, which is going to hold a class we're going to make, first class, and then click finish. Eclipse has now added that file firstclass.php to our project, and we have an editing window here. Let's go ahead and start using it. So we've just added our class, very simply, class first class, 
and we saw that actually nicely finished the curly braces there for us. Just normal IDE functionality that we'd expect. One thing we see though is that it's added it over here in the outline. The outline as you see as we keep typing here is going to keep changing as we add methods and such. The outline is going to reflect whatever we have in the editor here. You'll also notice these changes are seen down here. This is going to show us actually everything in our entire PHP project though. So when your project gets bigger, you're not actually always going to see the changes you're making immediately down here. What we tend to use, or what I tend to use, is the outline over here. So let's go ahead and make a constructor. With no arguments. And we see that this has been added over here. What if we decided that, let's see here, we want a private variable in this class called my var. We see that that's been added over here and we have a little designator to show us inside of a method that's a variable and it's actually a private variable. Now if we clicked on here it would take us around throughout our file. If we had a large file that would be much more useful. So then inside of our constructor, maybe we want to be setting my var. So we'll see here. We'll say so very, there's an argument here, uh, var. And then we're going to go ahead and set my var. Oh, we see that before we got done typing there, Eclipse went ahead and started offering us options. It saw that we typed this and it knew that it was going to be something within uh, this class and it knew that only things available right now were the constructor and uh, the instance variable uh, my var so I'm going to choose that set that equal to oh I didn't even get done typing there and it offered up uh, the possibilities it, see, it knows that var is in scope um, as one of the parameters there and so it offered that I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and choose that so there we see that Eclipse is already helping us uh, develop quickly, uh, doing syntax uh, coloring and uh, um, allowing us to navigate quickly throughout our files, doing lots of stuff that we would expect uh, from a professional IDE. Let's take a look at how things work when you get, we get a few more files and classes in here. Let's add a second class. We'll just call it second class. And let's see here. We'll make it very simil similar to first class. But let's add in a reference here to first class. We're going to assume that, uh, let's see here, we can uh, be a little more accurate. Depending on how your project was set up, you may or may not have needed this and say we want to uh, set my var uh, to a new instance of first class and say new first class okay nothing dramatic there how about though we're wandering around through our project and we're here in second class and we see this first class and we want to get there quickly and our project contains hundreds of files well a nice thing about Eclipse is if I hold down the control key then mouse over first class it will first show us a description of what we're looking at. This works for methods also, not just classes. If we were to click it while we've been holding down control and it has it underlined, it will go ahead and open up the file first class and take us directly to what we clicked on, in this case the class itself.